online classes and or working remotely, curiosity about digital note taking seems to be higher than ever. So today I'll be walking through my favorite digital note taking apps, extensions, and tips. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future note taking and tech focused videos and stay tuned to hear me talk more about some digital note taking templates that I've designed as freebies and made available in the description box below. Let's dive in. If you only had to use one app for note taking, OneNote has been my go-to recommendation for years. Whether you only use a laptop or only use a tablet, OneNote is versatile enough to take on any note taking need. You can type, you can handwrite with a stylus, you can import slides and documents into it and write on top of those slides or beside them. But I think what makes it a true standout is how it organizes your notes because you can easily flip between notebooks and pages. It's also accessible on PCs, Mac, Android, iOS devices, so you pretty much have the ability to look at your notes anywhere. I've talked a lot about OneNote in my previous digital note taking videos, but some features I love that I didn't mention in my previous videos include the immersive reader function that is able to essentially read back any text written notes out loud to you. So this is a great way to refamiliarize yourself with your notes while doing other things like cleaning or commuting. Can managers use corporate assets for altruistic ends without moral fault? You can add virtual sticky notes for tasks or questions that come to mind while writing. And you can also share your notes with classmates or coworkers, giving them the ability to edit or just the ability to view your notes. For those of you who have an iPad compatible with an Apple Pencil, I do still consider GoodNotes to be one of the best digital handwriting experiences. OneNote is pretty good, but GoodNotes is really optimized for digital handwriting, so I feel like it's just designed in a way that makes it more seamless to use. I think a feature that really showcases this is the ability to have this zoom in window that you write in, and it automatically will move the position of the page without you having to keep shifting the page right or left. And it also has controls like the ability to double tap to undo and triple tap to redo that makes it much faster to deal with mistakes. You can also search your handwriting and look at all your notes in a notebook at a glance so it's quick to find things. Milano is definitely one of the newest additions to my digital note taking and organization process. They actually sponsored a video on this channel a few weeks ago, but this is not sponsored, but I would recommend going to check out that video if you want a more extensive look at what you can do on Milanote. But Milano is just a great option for more creative work or for outlining things like big assignments and essays. They have some really good built-in templates like project plans, class notes, research proposals, brainstorming, and weekly plans. Some of the features I love about Milano is that, well, A, it's accessible anywhere that you have internet because it's something that you access through your browser. It's also a really great program to use when you're brainstorming projects or essays because you can rearrange things and make mood boards. Or even if you're in more creative fields like photography, cooking, graphic design, uh, obviously mood boards are going to be more of a part of your process. Although OneNote is amazing, I feel like it's the fun wild aunt, whereas Microsoft Word is the organized mom who remembers to sign her kids permission slips. <laughs> There's just something really reliable about Microsoft Word. So anytime I have an essay to submit or an assignment, I use Word because it's a more structured program that makes it easy to format assignments to fit professor standards. It's simple to adjust things like page margins, headers, fonts. You can also add in footnotes easily for references. And there's even some great templates that you can use for cover pages on assignments that warrant something more professional looking. Microsoft Word and Google Docs are very similar and in many ways Google Docs is a perfect option if you don't want to spend any money because it's free with a Gmail account. In school, although I often would use Microsoft Word for formal assignments, I always use Google Docs for group projects. Google Docs is fantastic for digital collaboration because multiple people can be making edits to a document at once and it's really fast at syncing up those changes. There were many times in school when, you know, a group and I would be doing an assignment together on Zoom and via the Google Docs and it was never, we never ran into any issues with that. I think Office has similar capabilities, but I don't know, it's just an awesome experience on Google Docs. You can open a chat box and communicate with team members without affecting the document. You can also add comments to specific sections of the assignment so your team knows exactly what points you're trying to talk about or any changes specifically that you want to make. 
This isn't technically a note-taking tool, but chances are if you're doing a lot of note-taking, you're either a student or working remotely, and there are probably due dates and deadlines you need to keep track of. Google Calendar is what I use as an online calendar, and what's great is you can create a separate calendar for personal, school, and work-life plans. You can even take it a step farther and make a separate calendar for each class or work project. I like to customize my calendar colors to make it a bit more personal. I also have notifications turned on on all of my devices so that they alert me 15 minutes before a task, what I'm supposed to do or where I'm supposed to go. So now that we've gone over some of the note-taking apps, let's go over some of my favorite plugins for making digital note-taking easier. Again, this video is not sponsored, but Grammarly is one of my favorite plugins. I use it all the time and it really comes in handy for catching errors in writing assignments or even when writing emails to professors and coworkers. I wouldn't say it takes the place of having fresh human eyes edit your work, but it has saved me from my fair share of grammatical blunders. And it's a good safety net for those of you who don't have peers edit your assignments. Assignments. Plagiarism is a serious academic offense. It's not something you want to play around with. So in university, I use the philosophy of when in doubt, cite it just to make sure I had all my bases covered when I submitted assignments. My bib is a great extension for keeping track of sources while doing research. When you come across a source you want to use, all you need to do is launch the extension and it will present you with a citation ready to copy into your work cited page. You can also make edits to the citation and save your sources to projects so you can revisit them at any any point. Two new extensions that I haven't had too much time to play around with, but I think are really cool and worth mentioning are the Focus To Do extension, which is a Pomodoro method timer. The Pomodoro method is a really popular studying technique that if you haven't heard about it, you should definitely do research on. And a really cool feature is that you can have ambient background noise going on while you do your work. The other extension allows you to highlight text on websites, add notes, and when you go back to a web page, you'll always see your highlights. So I think this is a pretty incredible extension to have for research purposes. Here are some common questions I get about digital note-taking. Is a tablet and stylus better than a laptop for digital note-taking? For me, I use both in university and I would say I would have been able to do digital note-taking solely on a laptop, but I don't think I would have loved digital note-taking solely on a tablet. So for me, the tablet is definitely an add-on, but it is a pretty incredible add-on. I have an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and it's so comfortable to digitally handwrite on, especially with programs like GoodNotes or even Procreate for creative projects. If you're looking at Apple Pencil specifically, Apple now has less expensive iPads that are compatible with the Apple Pencil. So I'd recommend looking at those. I'm sure for some people and some programs, an iPad with the stylus and keyboard would work, but I do love doing my typing on a proper laptop. I only have a laptop, but can I still make interesting looking notes? Absolutely, you can experiment with fonts and customizing colors. You can add images and videos. You can also design templates for your notes so you can customize a template to fit your needs. And you can design these for free on programs like Canva. I have actually designed some for you to use and you can access them by clicking the link in my description box. You can write on them directly or use them in programs like GoodNotes and OneNote and write on top of them. One of my favorite styles for organizing my notes is using the margin on the left side of the page to keep track of page numbers while doing my reading notes so I can revisit the exact page of text I've made notes about at a later date. I also sometimes like to use two columns when I need to write down a large quantity of smaller points so that things can stay nicely separated. In classes and now meetings, I rarely had time to make anything look nice because my focus was just on getting everything I needed to down. So what I find more important than trying to perfect to notes in real time is to embrace a new step in your note taking where you format your notes after class or after you finish your readings. One of the beauties of digital note taking is that it's possible to make major edits to your notes in seconds. Whereas with paper handwritten notes, as much as I love them, they have to be completely rewritten sometimes for them to be easier to digest. Principal formatting tips for digital note taking. One, group like ideas together. Two, embrace spacing. More spaces are more pleasing to the eye. If you're typing notes, even doing something simple like changing your line space from single to 1.5 or double can make your notes instantly easier to read. 
Three, highlight and bold important keywords and ideas. Four, use different sized fonts to bring attention to headings by say sizing up or add in explanations to clarify a keyword or concept by sizing down. Five, use divider lines to separate main ideas. As I mentioned earlier, I use vertical divider lines for separating page numbers and notes for when I'm doing reading notes, and I use horizontal lines to close off sections. Color is a point that I feel like seems obvious, but I think it's often overlooked, but changing the color of fonts, backgrounds, and boxes can have big visual impact. You can even add in custom colors by finding color palettes that you adore on Pinterest or sites like Coolers. You can assign a different color to each class or work project or have different colors for things like definitions. Even the absence of color can be something you use to your advantage. So something that I sometimes like to do is use a light gray color on text that clarifies concepts or if I'm ever providing an example of a concept to being used in real life I'll hit it with the light gray that way it doesn't distract from the main ideas of the notes but that extra information is still there you also have the option to download new fonts and install them into your computer or design and use templates like the ones I showed earlier. I also think there's something to be said about making your digital environment a fun one to be on. So change the background of your screensavers, add cool digital clock, put on study music. I have a whole study music playlist on Spotify. It will be linked down below and it's filled with instrumentals that instantly get me into the study zone. So finding the things that kind of get you into that working headspace, it can be really powerful. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future tech, note-taking, or an organization videos. Let me know in the comments below if there's a specific video that you want to see. And don't forget to also check out that link in the description box for those free PDF templates. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Until then, bye everyone.